Hello everyone and welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo where we find, learn, and play the great strategy games. We are currently playing Civil War 2 by A.G. Odd or someone put it in the comments. Uh, that stands in French for acronym. <laughs> A.G. Odd is actually A-G-E-O-D acronym for advanced gaming something or another something or another that's not important what is important is the war we have on the eastern front here of the civil war you'll see we're in late may of 1861 we've put in all of our orders for this turn now we've got all of these locked units we're building some units we've also got our army of the potomac that's still locked and still building here i've kind of zoomed out so we can see the action and we are just going to jump right in. This is episode 9, by the way. I'm supposed to say that, uh, so I have that indexed. But this is episode number 9. Uh, in the previous 8, we've moved along here uh, a couple of months, uh, but we've really talked about how to play the game. And this can be a complex game. It's got a steep learning curve at first. Once you get the hang of it, I think it's awesome. I think it's like playing the best you know, board game well, I say that about War in the Pacific. I can't say it about Civil War II, but I think this is the best grand strategy Civil War game that's out there. Uh, and it's it's like a really cool board game where everything gets resolved for you. So, okay, let's hit the turn. We'll see it process 15 days, and then we'll start to see the action unfold. And you'll see it does this every time. It goes through these 15 days. This is how it resolves everything. This is on a WeGo system, as we talked about before. So it resolves everything it wants to do AI-wise and like what our moves are. Um, and then everything moves uh, you know, at the same time. So we've got some uh, action out here by Morgantown. Parkersburg, so in West Virginia, that's going to heat up pretty quickly. Uh, looks like our Winchester guys got knocked back from Harper's Ferry, but we'll look at that when the turn resolves. You know, we're day 13, day 14, so it, it goes through and resolves each day. Oh, this is great. Okay. Um, looks good. Nothing, nothing bad happened, <laughs> which is what you really want early on in the war as the South. Um, you just don't want disaster. You know, Richmond is somewhat exposed. The Union, and they will throughout the war, don't get me wrong, the Union will always have more troops than you and always have better, uh, you know, unit or bigger units, let's say that. Um, you should have better units, but they'll always have more. So you just don't want to see disaster strike early, though, because once we can get our forces kind of built up here, we can really mount a nice defense. Um, okay, so let's see. We see that our, our guy, MG, MJ Thompson, that we moved out here last time, uh, he made his way down here to Staunton which is nice. We see that we did get a new uh, reserve brigade, brigade out here, the third reserve. Uh, I would have liked our guy Floyd here to get activated. The Union brought troops here into Morgantown and they're bringing them over here from Parkersburg. You know, kind of a pincher movement on Floyd. Uh, but they did not attack him. They haven't moved across the river, haven't moved into his region. And so he's still locked. He did not get activated. And we want to get him the heck out of there as fast as we can. We see our main two armies here. Uh, nothing much happened. Uh, they're, they're building. They're still building. Uh, let's see. Beauregard, I think, still has, what, one more turn? Yep. He's locked for one more turn, as is Johnston. And this is, you know, historically accurate, right? Uh, Bull Run, historically would be coming up early next month. So these guys are still building forces out here. Uh, we did get our supply train over here. You know what we're gonna do? Well, let's see. Hmm. Let's go through this in a logical way. Let's look at our mess messages first. Uh, okay, this is just a historical thing. You know, we will avenge Jackson's death. Uh, we had a martyr. 
we have some murders. So, you know, it gives us nice little historical uh, context and stories here sometimes. So that's great. The St. Louis Massacre. The Union Infantry violated Missouri neutrality and they seized the St. Louis Arsenal, the largest supply of weapons in the West. They arrested the state militiamen who were paraded as prisoners. Um, oh, nice. Okay. Okay, this is, yeah, this is a really important one, obviously. The idea of remaining neutral is now out of the question. Uh, that's for Missouri. General Price has been assigned to command the newly reformed State Guard to secure Missouri for the Confederacy. That's great. So we've got, uh, we've got Sterling Price down here who has gotten a really, really uh, great force down here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. So you may remember, we've got the Army of the West forming here in Little Rock. We also have J.O. Shelby down here, who is a fantastic cavalryman. And if we look up here at Price, he's got some more powerful cavalry. Now we looked down here last time, and we said, hey, maybe we'll put... Uh, J.O. Shelby with these guys, you know, the 3rd Texas, the 1st Arkansas. Um, we've also got the 1st Arkansas Infantry now that's forming up there. Oh, that's a that's a guard unit. That's a uh, militia. Okay, so they'll stay. I always keep the militia in town. You know, they'll stay in, Ar in Arkansas, Arkansas. Um, so looking back here at Price, though, the 1st Missouri Cavalry looks good. Rivas and Campbell's. So these, these guys are pretty powerful. We'll probably move Shelby up there uh, later in this turn and have him take some of those cavalry and have him running out, you know, doing cavalry raids, doing scouting, things like that. Um, so we've looked at the two messages there. Uh, it's telling us this guy's been built. Okay, let's look at our messages down here. Uh, and click on, we just want to keep, there we go, just the scripted events. Uh, St. Louis Massacre, Jackson's Death, uh, we just talked about those. We may increase our rail pool again. Now it says again, uh, we didn't have this option yet, uh, but we're going to go look at that, it's very important. We, we may increase our river pool again, and that's what these are. New industrial options at F5. So that's not something that we've encountered before, this F5 button. So we're going to go look at that in just a second. Benjamin Huger organizes his forces at Petersburg as more forces are raised in the east. So let's go look. Oh, okay, so here's who, here's Huger. He's down here. What's his special ability? He's an artillery man. Uh, so he's very good with artillery. So of course they put him out on the board here with no artillery. Uh, but we are going to rectify that once he becomes active. That should probably be, oh, it's only one turn. Okay, great. So we've got more, you know, showing up here, and that's good because we need all the help we can get. So that's Huger. Uh, new supply units received. So these are wagon trains. So we got some new wagon trains. Oh, great. So we've got another one here in Corinth. We picked that up, uh, and we'll move it over here to Memphis. We're kind of, as you can tell, using Memphis as our staging grounds. Uh, it does look like we got more stuff over here at Memphis, so we'll have to come take a look at that um, later. I think these were the guys that were already there. You know, we've got a garrison, that'll stay there. Uh, but we got this new 2-2nd Brigade. Uh, so great, hopefully in the, our messages over here we'll see that. So that's the first supply. As I said, you know, we just pull it. Here, let's click on it. Let's talk about movement again. You just, I just did delete, delete. Uh, you can either pull it where you ultimately want it to go, and it'll plot a path for you, or you can do it yourself. Either way, it's going to show up in Memphis. We've already got this one here. Now that's interesting because let's see. Sterling Price does not have a wagon train with him, and he's out here in the middle of nowhere. Um, Ben McCullough in our Army of the West also does not have a wagon train. So I'm actually going to take this wagon train, one West supplies, and I'm going to move it to Little Rock, first of all. 
Now that would take 53 days, but, so let's look at our rail. Our rail right now is 91. Now let's see, oh, it looks like we could move it maybe by river. Let's try that. So our riverine movement is 28. Now it just went down to 16, but this is only gonna take us 11 days. Uh, so railroad, let's try that. Railroad right now is 91. It goes down to 79. Uh, where'd it go? Hold on. Oh, when we took the riverine off, it just put it back in Memphis. Okay, so 63 days. Let's hit railroad. Wow, five days. It'll be over there. Uh, for seven, for 12 railroad points. Hmm. You know what? I think I'm going to do the riverine movement. So, so that's cool. That, that shows you how this works. So we hit Riverine. You can see that it's doing the Press Your Luck style light up. And down here it comes. And it'll be here in 11 days. So we could either maybe put that with the Army of the West. We'll see. Or we may send it by river even further up here to our guy Sterling Price. Oh, we didn't really look at Price. He's only giving us two command. He's out of the chain of command, obviously. He can't form an army or a core yet, so he's out of the chain of command. This is just an independent stack out there. He's a one-star general, so he's giving us four uh, normally, but since he's out of the chain of command, it's two. Uh, his stats are 401. <laughs> so he's usually, you know, he's got a better than average odds of activating because he's got that four strategic. His offense is zero. This is not an offensive man. Uh, double meaning there, Sterling. With those beautiful blue eyes and blonde hair. Who knows if that was true. But he is a one defense. I mean, he's better than nothing, right? Um, he is a one defensive general. So at some point, his seniority is 14. At some point, we're going to have to try to find a general that will go underneath 14. So, you know, hopefully get a general out here that is a two, you know, a two star would outrank him regardless of seniority uh, because he's only a one star. Uh, if we get more one stars out here, we'll try to get somebody that's a 13 or better on seniority. Um, you know, McCullough, oh, well, okay, McCullough is a 13 and is a one star general. He could take, and historically McCullough and Sterling Price fought over Missouri. They, they I say they fought, you know, I shouldn't say that when we're playing a war game. They didn't, like, pitch battle, but they were running two separate groups, uh, you know, two separate armies, per se, in Missouri, and they didn't really coordinate, and it really hurt the South. These two did not like each other. For purposes of this game, if McCullough stays 13 and Price is 14, we'll probably run McCullough out there to take over that force, and then we'll eventually you know, get a two-star general or a three-star general out here to run the Army of the West. McCullough is not destined to run the Army of the West. He just shows up here with it in its, you know, embryonic fashion. Um, so as soon as he's active, McCullough, we're going to take him out here to get uh, this group. What are they calling it? Well, they call it the Price Command. That's going to be awkward when McCullough takes that over. Um, now we have this other wagon train. Yeah, we'll see what we do with it. We may leave it in Memphis. So let's go back here. Oh, so new industrial options. Let's go to F5. And here we go. So Department of the Interior. Now you'll see we've got our almanac listing up here. You get to all these things with the F buttons, the function buttons. So F5 is interior. So now we've got all these options in here, and this is great because we need all this stuff, right? We need war, more war materials. So what does this do? Build ironworks in coastal cities. So Manchester, Virginia, New Orleans, New Orleans, okay? Your Secretary of Industry has convinced the government to subsidize entrepreneurs to build new ironworks. Uh, the cost of this now is going to be $300,000 and 75 tons of war supplies to build these. Uh, that's pretty steep, right? I mean, 300,000, we'd still be over a million dollars here. You know, we'd still be at, you know, 1,017 for $300,000. 
but it's 75 tons of war supplies. Now, you may be saying, hey, I thought you said we need to do this to get more war supplies. And it's a fair point, right? Uh, but sometimes you got to invest uh, before you, you know, and, and let that seed grow. So if we spent this 75 now, eventually this is going to be cranking out war supply every turn the rest of the game, assuming the Union doesn't get to it. Um so, interesting. Okay, 300. Now, these are all the same, meaning whether they say it's ironworks, arsenals, armories, it doesn't matter. They're going to be churning out the abstracted idea of war supplies. So don't get kind of caught up in, oh, I need more arsenals. You don't need more arsenals. You just need any of these. You know, they're, they're abstractions, right? So, whoops, we don't want Jefferson Davis signing that. Not yet. What we're going to do is look for the cheapest one um, to get started here. So 300,075, 300,075, uh, 175 and 40 is the cost here, 150 and 30. Now that's interesting. Okay, and also the other the other thing you want to think about here is where are they being built? So this Atlanta Arsenal, Savannah Arsenal, Columbus Arsenal. Um, you want these generally to be, it's better to have them built somewhere that's not in the middle of the war, right? So take these, uh, the coastal city was one. If we're about to lose New Orleans, uh, the Union has landed amphibious forces, you know, in Louisiana, and we may lose New Orleans. Obviously, you don't want to be building factories there, right? It's just common sense. Um, Georgia is pretty well protected, and this only costs 150 and 30. Now, it's very likely that's going to be churning out less than the other ones, uh, but it's a start, right? It gets us going. This is, okay, Tennessee and Mississippi, which... Tennessee is a little more, you know, Nashville Arsenal, that'd be a little more under threat than Georgia at the start. Uh, Mississippi is well protected. This is 250. I think, I think let's go ahead and build these arsenals in Georgia. Um, yeah, let's do that. It's going to cost us 150. We've got money. So you can see when we sign this as Jefferson Davis, it goes ahead and, and subtracts it right off the top. So that's great. Oh, well, that was fortuitous. Uh, you remember in those messages, it says we can increase our rail pool and increase our river pool. These are our two big transportation buckets. You know, again, an abstraction, uh, but a, a pretty good way to handle these, I think. Um, these are just overall how many rail points, how many river points we have as the Confederacy. And assuming the rail lines aren't cut, we can use every rail line that you can see on the map. Uh, we want to pretty much always be doing this when it becomes available. Uh, we need all this we can get. Now you're seeing $40,000 and 20 tons war supply. Uh, we're definitely going to do that. Uh, we want to increase our rail pool. That gives supply, that makes our supply better, and makes it uh, easier to transport troops around. So we're going to do that. Now, you know, we're kind of doing this all in one turn. Remember, we need this war supply to build more forces, um, which is obviously very important as well. You know, we're outnumbered already in the east. In the west, we're looking, you know, pretty good, although that won't last for long. Um, and then the increase to the river pool would be 50 and 25. We're going to wait. Let's wait and increase the river pool next time. So the rail pool, in my opinion, is more important to get going. So let's get that going. So we've got war production. These are all the things we're building. Our various. We've got Jefferson Davis wants that rail pool better. We've still got our two treasury options. Let's go to the interior. We're going to start building arsenals in Georgia. Uh, government, we decided we're not really going to do any of these things, although I will say the foreign entry is now up to 18 because uh, the North hasn't immediately knocked us out of the war. That's kind of popped up. Oh, and the North declared a total blockade, which uh, pisses the European powers off, at least momentarily. Um, 
government, you know, map, regions, look at our objectives. How are we doing for a VP? Total victory points, we're at 416. Uh, we're getting 53 a turn. The U.S. is at 379, so we're quote-unquote ahead, but they're getting 53 every turn. So that's our almanac this turn. Um, you know, we looked at our new supply units that we got. Right, that's the one at Memphis that's going to Memphis. Oh, we didn't look at this one. Okay, I'm glad I came back down here. Um, this one's in Atlanta. Hmm. Now, if we really zoom out, you know, you can see uh, there's not a whole lot going on here. Here's Corinth. Here's the one we got in Corinth that's going over to Memphis. We have that other one going to the, um, for the moment, going to Little Rock and probably eventually on to Fayetteville. Uh, oh, yeah, we've had a new Knoxville force pop up. We'll get to that when we get to the other messages. Uh, but I think what we want to really do, and well, that's got, that's got a supply train with it. Now, I'll tell you, as you build the bigger armies, you're going to want maybe three or four supply trains if they're not in a really good place to supply naturally. Um, how long would it take for this bad boy to get up to Nashville? 57 days? Uh, sure, why not? You know, it's like three, it's a little more than, or it's a little less than four complete turns, and it'll come up here to Nashville. Um, that's fine. We could send it to Knoxville and then this way, but we've already got this one east that's going to help these guys out over here in the east. So let's get uh, let's get him moving up to Nashville. Uh, we've got time. I mean, we're not going to be like running any kind of crazy cavalry scouting. You know, we're Kentucky's still neutral for one thing. So let's get this up to Nashville, and then we can decide what to do later. Remember, we've still got our gunboats out here at Nashville. We don't have any real forces here. Uh, it's great that we got this Knoxville force, though. As I said before, this kind of rail line from Knoxville that you know rolls along here to Charlottesville, Virginia, very important. This is how we get everything east to west and west to east. Uh, you know, the Union will be coming down here and putting pressure on that very quickly. Um, but cool. Okay. Let's uh let's go let's keep going into our messages here. So that's great. You know, your towns will be popping these out. So always check your messages. Your when it says supply units, uh one of your towns has popped out a uh, you know, I make it make it sound like a berth. It's uh <laughs> popped out a new wagon train that you can send along to um, supply your armies. And it's very important. It's very important once you get up in here, you know, into Kentucky and you're fighting these battles, West Virginia. Uh, there just aren't good major cities out here that can give you much supply. So we've looked through all this. We did our industrial options, uh, our blockade runners. Let's see how our blockade runners are doing out here. There they are in the Gulf of Mexico. Now this is still this is a, still a power ten. This is a power five. This got knocked a little bit, uh, but we got one money and eight war supply through there. So that's great. All that war supply we can get is fantastic. Uh, Winchester Militia, that's right, we did see this, and it says Winchester Militia engaged the U.S. at Harper's Ferry, and remember, we did have it on defend, so they probably fired a couple of shots, but they succeeded in retreating before the battle, so that's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted them to do. We had them on defense, and so they engaged them, and they said, ah, uh, this doesn't look good. Let's get out of here, and so they got out of Harper's Ferry. We've lost um, Harper's Ferry. But that's okay. I mean, that's, you know, it's not a terrible result. Uh, at least these guys didn't get mauled. While patrolling, the Caribbean blockade found our Gulf Squadron. Uh-huh. That's why this power for this guy is down to a five. And you can see its combat power here got knocked and its cohesion did a little bit. Uh, is because they inflicted five hits on them. And uh, that's okay. That happens. That happens with your blockade blockade runners out here um you know we did get some through so that's all you're trying to do uh oh remember so good old josiah tatnall we've got him up to an admiral let's go look at him he was going to go out to that atlantic uh blockade did he get moving 
Aren't you moving? Oh, uh, do, 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 do. He did. Okay, perfect. So remember, we want this Hunter Squadron to get in with the Georgia Squadron because we wanted to get the advantage of Tatnall. So let's. Uh, it was supposed to merge. It hasn't yet. Maybe it was going to. I don't know, but who cares? Let's just let's do it ourselves. So we just pulled one index card onto the other, and that merges them. You'll see those blue blinking um, soldiers. So cool. Virginia Squadron was delayed four days. This will happen. Um, so remember, we have this squadron of ships here that we wanted to get down to Norfolk. I do believe that they got down there. We're going to find out here really fast. Now, Norfolk is being blockaded because the North has a gen it, the Northern player has a decision where it can, you know, do a full blockade or do a more limited blockade. They decided on full blockade. We saw that in the messages in an early episode. So these big, you know, uh, ports of ours are under a blockade. It's a blue water blockade. Uh, we went into that before, but let's get out here to the... Whoops, I went past the naval block. Yeah, Atlantic blockade. Look at this. 506 power. That just gives you an idea of how much better the, the Union Navy is. They've got their shipping lanes here. I kind of feel like you got to pick to doing one or the other. You either try to knock out their shipping or you try to blockade run. I've never quite understood why you would knock out their shipping. The North has is going to have supply. I mean, they're, they just are. They're going to have war supplies. They're going to have general supplies. There's not a whole lot you can do about that as the South. You can try to slip their blockade, though, and get more war supplies for yourself. So I, I run all of these ships out here into the blockade. Uh, you know, if somebody else plays it differently and can explain to me why you do, uh, please do in the comments. I, I would love to hear it. Um, I Okay. Oh, what this means. Well, oh, anyway. Gosh, sorry. I lost my train of thought, which you may notice happens from time to time as I get excited about one thing or another. Now, you'll remember we sent this squadron down here, uh, Chesapeake Squadron. We sent these guys down here, right? So the uh, the Virginia is being built. We've got a new ironclad being built here. Uh, the ironclads, let's see where all they can operate. Uh, mobility. E, why won't you click on that? I guess because it's not built yet. Okay, well, we'll come back and look to that. I just want to see where the Virginia... I can't remember off the top of my head. I th I'm pretty sure the uh, ironclads can only operate, you know, in what we call the brown water here, even though it looks even a nicer blue, but in more shallow waters. Now, the Plymouth is a big, you know, warship, so that's interesting. I think it also has some pretty good speed, the Plymouth and the Germantown. So this stands in for two ships, of course, just like units do uh, stand in for different elements. Plentiful, superior... This is weird. Why, why, why can't I click on that? All right, get out of that. Let's go back here. The, the whole point of what I was trying to say here, because there's nothing we could do uh, with this group yet. Uh, we could do this, though. Aha. I see what we're going to do. All right, we're going to send these guys out to Tatnall. This is the same kind of ship here, the Patrick Henry. We're going to send them out to the... Atlantic blockade. So we got him out here by dragging him out here. Now he's out here. We can take his card, see the merge. We can merge him. Uh, let's go green and green. Yeah, D and or uh, defensive and green. That's fine. Now we're going to give him that special order to evade combat at all costs, and we're going to have him uh, match up with Tatnall here. Uh, we'll come back and check that because I don't know why he didn't merge before, but you know. We'll see what happened. Oh, don't forget, we've got the Carolina group coming here. Gosh, their cohesion is nothing after Beauregard left them. But once they get here in like a turn and a half at Charleston, we'll have a decision to make about whether to send them north by rail. Okay, let's get back over here. We were going through all these. Uh, we've got the blockade. We'll eventually, by the end of this turn, look at our Navy again, see if we got any other naval a assets. Now we've got a bunch of movement. Um, Movement and restriction orders. Virginia Squadron was delayed. Oh, that takes me all the way back. The reason this would happen is because of some kind of command problem. 
so maybe your commander didn't activate. In this case, when we brought those three naval assets to meet up with our admiral down here, it didn't even have a commander. And so the game's just telling you there was like some uh, mix up in the orders or they just didn't get started when they should because they didn't have good enough command. So they were delayed four days uh, before they got going, but they did get down here to Norfolk. Okay, Islandton Squadron, Nashville Squadron, uh, we had moved those out into uh, their very, their rivers, the Island 10 into the Mississippi, the Nashville into um, the Cumberland River. So that's this one. This is just telling us there was a little bit of a command delay. I mean, this doesn't have a commander, so it uh, doesn't seem too far off the mark. Uh, Louisiana transports, remember we peeled these guys off of those gunboats down here. They're just back up here in this harbor. So if we put the gunboats out here, if we click on the anchor, we'll see we've got the Manassas here, but then we've also got the transports here. So if we need, um, right, so if we need to transport anything, we're protecting these. There's no reason to have them out in the middle of the river firing at things. Uh, you know, that's not what they're for. So uh, now it tells us these things have arrived where they're supposed to. The Nashville has. When Winchester Militia is back, these were the guys that were up at Harper's Ferry. They got knocked back here. Now that they're here, let's put them on defend. Hmm. Now that they're in their hometown, let's put them on defend, defend is what I think of it, but it's really like defend and defend retreat. So they will retreat, but they're going to fire a couple of shots. The other thing we're going to do is have them quote unquote, enter the structure, meaning we're going to have them in the town of Winchester. Uh, so that's that special order. They will enter the structure. Now this means they can be besieged. So eh, let's think about that. Let's actually not have them enter the structure. We don't want to get a situation where they're besieged in here and we can't get them out. We would rather if they get attacked, they just pop back here and hang out with Joseph Johnston who can protect them. Now you'll notice we've got some guys from the north coming down here. Uh, we got another northern army. Now we don't really know, well, we can see it's got uh, a three-star general, two one-stars. Okay. Uh, it's got regular, 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 re five regular infantry units that we know of. Now that could be of any size. We just don't have a ton of scouting on these guys yet because obviously we haven't activated Stonewall Jack, or I say we, the game won't allow us to activate Stonewall yet to get moving out here. Um, so we just don't know quite yet what, what's going on. Uh, again, you know, there's not a whole lot we can do with these armies right at the top uh, because they're locked. You know, it's just being historically accurate. The war didn't really kick off shots fired uh, in, a ma in any kind of major way until Bull Run, which happens again in just a few weeks historically may happen sooner here may happen later i mean i've played games where the north uh the northern player uh really just keeps building and building and building here i don't think it's necessarily the best strategy for them but it happens uh we're still building our fo oh we've got our first headquarters support remember when we started building him uh let's go ahead and put him in the army of the potomac that's where he's gonna go so when you put these um Oh wow, this had not updated. How crazy is that? I was like, why in the world did that just jump up like that? Uh, hold on. Okay, well that just had not automatically updated our strength. You know, all these guys are gathering strength every turn. Um, and for whatever reason, that had just not updated to what their strength was. Normally it always would do that. And I suspect the same happened here uh, let's just put Armistice Brigade in there for a second, and then we'll take it back out because it's going to be locked longer than these other forces, I believe. And now let's look at the Shenandoah. Yep, see, he popped up too. 312. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, look at Beauregard. 812 now. This is great. Um, and as you click along here... Oh, I'm sorry. We're still on Johnston. As you click along here... 
you'll see, you know, we've got our headquarters support in here, and now it'll tell you what it'll do. It's a training master. This leader provides one experience point for every turn to all units in the stack he is in by drilling them. I mean, how great's that, right? That's just free. Uh, he gives you signal. The signal unit is of great use to enable commander for transmitting orders along the chain of command. Um, one plus one command point and an additional plus one per ability level to the stack it is in. So this boosts everything up. This gives you more command points. This also boosts all your other uh, special abilities. So that's great. Uh, this also is medical service. So it gives a 15% cohesion recovery rate. That's why I said you've got to build these guys. They are uh, they're one of the more powerful units in the game. Uh, they really, really kick you up. You see we gained two command points here. So now we're down to a 26% penalty. Um, all because of that guy. He added two command points by boosting up an ability, a command ability, and also just giving you a... a uh, a plus one for the signal unit. I think actually signal units are just plus two, um, but it gives a plus one to these special abilities for for these uh, generals. So the signal unit, let's go back to that. I just want to make sure that's clear. Uh, the signal unit gives us two command points and it gives a plus one per ability level to the stack it's in. So that's awesome. Um, Great. I'd forgotten about that. Now, you know, Beauregard's up to 812. That's going to kind of scare these guys off. I thought it looked weird. I thought it looked a little below below uh, strength. And I'm. it's very curious. To, I've never seen that happen before. It's not a bug in the game. I, I don't know. Just for some reason this turn it didn't update uh, because usually it always does. Yeah, it'll be nice when we get a headquarters support unit up here. Those are very helpful. Uh, let's get through these messages because I want to, you know, Try to keep these to 40 minutes. Um, our 61 division generals, they have arrived. That's these guys down here. This is MJ Thompson. That's just what they're named now, 61 division generals. What a what a fun name. Um, Georgia Squadron, these are the guys we moved out to the blockade. Uh, cool. Oh, okay, so Smith, Winder, Bushrod Johnson are all active now. Um, that reminds me. We before we resolve this turn. Oh look, we've got uh, we've got more reserves here in Richmond as well. I guess we're about to get that um, message here in a minute. Okay, so these two generals are now active. Um, these guys end up making seniority 82, seniority 89. They're both one stars, but they've got de pretty decent stats. Uh, well. Smith isn't that great, 3-1-1. But Winder at least is 3-2-2. A lot of times I, I like to put them up here um, because eventually they will become division commanders. Uh, as Brigadier Generals, they'll have their own division up here. Uh, and then I can break Stonewall Jackson out, and he's not held back. And I think that's what I'll do with these guys. Let's um, take these guys, the General's Pool, and let's get them up here to Strasbourg, which we're being told would take 20 days. Let's see if they take much rail at all. We've got 91 rail. Oh, well, they take nothing. But it takes, they literally take, you know, I mean, it's two guys. We're loading on a, a train, right? So that makes sense. Uh, so take eight days. You know, you see it plot the course. Um, I just love this system. I, I seriously, when you get used to it, I just think it's so great. Now that would take eight days. The only, the reason I'm hesitating, the only reason I'm hesitating is that brings them up here, and this could be a vulnerable region. Um, whereas 20 days just isn't that big of a deal. I mean, Johnson isn't even active yet, so the next this next turn resolution is going to be 15 days, and these guys would be five days away. You know, they'll be like here, and then they'll come into the valley. Um, yeah, let's just have them. These guys are mad. They're like, we could have taken a nice posh train 
and here we go, you know, having to march all the way out to the Shenandoah Valley. Hopefully it's a nice journey. Uh, so yeah, Richmond's building up here. We've got, also got this Richmond force with the other reserves. I'll tell you something I like to do. You know, these guys, well, why the heck is, I, Bushrod Johnson must have failed his activation or something. Because it keeps telling us, well, it says fix for one more turn. Let's take this Virginia reserve and merge it. And the only reason I'm doing this is not because I care about Bushrod Johnson. If, you know, first of all, this gives them a worse penalty. Um, so it's not even like the smart thing to do. I just like to be able to keep track and have the fewest index cards I can. Uh, we've given him a bigger penalty than, you know, when we had these guys out of here, he only had a small penalty. I'm just putting them in here to keep track of them. You know, we've got all these reserve brigades or volunteer brigades that we're going to be littering around. They will never see combat, hopefully, with Bushrod Johnson. So I'm just putting them in here. Um, oh, well, that actually is interesting because now I'm like, oh, I wish I had more generals again. Uh, oh, let's not forget, we got Ben Huger down here who could use a general as well. Eh, none of this is really under threat right now, so I'm just going to leave as is. And looky there, we're at 40 minutes. When we come back next time, we're going to go through, you know, the rest of our, heck, we didn't make it through the messages uh, this time. Let's just look at the, our, our last few here. Bushrod Johnson was the last one. It says it's now active. That was a lie. He became inactive again. Uh, AR Northwest Division, we saw these guys out here, right? That's Sterling Price. Uh, George Holland. Oh, okay. So we did, uh, we got another general here. Uh, Memphis Force, Memphis Garrison, West Supplies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's an admiral. George Holland's. Okay. He's got, so we're going to peel off the transports here as we always do. And we're going to, now remember, we have these ships up here. So why don't we take these guys? Uh, Let's try to get it in the river. We did it. Five days. And then once he gets... Okay, we're going to have him offensive, offensive. And once he gets up here, uh, you'll see that now his index card, or his, uh, his game card clicks off because, you know, to reduce clutter because you've clicked on something else. But you still have this circle here. That's still him. Uh, so we'll merge them when they get up there. Now, what is that? Oh, that's merge. Okay. Uh, so we got that. Let's get through this last message. Memphis transports are now active. Uh, okay, so we just got some more transports here at Memphis. Um, oh, let's click on this because we just... Memphis transports, we just peeled off of here. We've got that brigade. Okay, gunboat. Memphis garrison. Memphis force. Okay, we're good. You know, the transports are going to stay here and dock. And with that, I will thank you very much for joining me. This has been episode number nine of our Civil War II uh, playthrough tutorial. I'm having a lot of fun making this. I love this game. And uh, if I can just turn on a couple of people to ever trying this game, uh, I will consider this a success. It's a great game. Great, you know, uh, grand strategy civil war game so as always thank you this has been strategy gaming dojo and i will catch you next time thanks